UFOs, unidentified flying objects. Scientists, researchers, even military personnel and astronauts have been discussing them for years. Some people swear they've seen, photographed and filmed them. But all too often, the documents remain secret. In recent months, however, some major governments have begun to make part of their files on the unidentified flying objects public. France began declassification in March 2007, followed by Great Britain in May 2007 and Ecuador in May 2008. In the same period, the Vatican gave its opinion on the matter. Padre José Gabriel Funes released a significant and surprising statement. A belief in the existence of extraterrestrials does not go against the Catholic faith. Of the secret documents that are now accessible to the wider public, the Ecuadorian material is perhaps the most significant and the most fascinating. And soon other Latin American countries may take the same step. The extraordinary change in the Ecuadorian government's stance on UFOs is due above all to the work of investigative journalist Jaime Rodriguez. Thanks to his tireless research and his programs broadcast from the Ecuadorian TV channel Equavisa. His achievement, made together with the head of state Rafael Correa, is just the latest step in a long journey. It took me 22 years, from 1983 to 2005, to try to explain to the military that the UFO phenomenon should go from speculative to official. That is, if government authorities give their opinions on many issues, such as volcanic eruptions, climate problems and agriculture, why couldn't there be representatives of the government who discuss this issue, which is so vital to us? Things being as they are, when Colonel Lucio Gutierrez stood for the presidency of the Republic, we managed to besiege him, so to speak, with the support of the media. And that's how he offered to make a commitment, saying to me, Mr. Rodriguez, don't worry, because my government will be completely different. When he became president a second time, we reminded him of the promise he had made, and he confirmed his commitment. He sent us to his personal secretary, Oscar Ayerve, in Guayaquil. And we brought him an informational file on the issue and the reasons why the Ministry of Defence ought to give it special attention. And so on April the 5th, 2005, the CIFO, or the Ecuadorian Committee for the Investigation of the UFO Phenomenon, was created under the presidency of Colonel Lucio Gutierrez. Once the committee was created, the military began to work with civilians on a convincing report aimed at persuading the government to break the seal of secrecy on the UFO documents. But there were major problems from the start. The first problem was the funds that were promised but then not granted. The civilian researchers thus decided to find their own funding. There were six civilians involved, although officially there were three of us. The other three worked with us, and thus in total we had a team of six. The six of us collected the money and we spent $12,000 in two years before we got the dossier. The second obstacle was the fact that military personnel were afraid of ruining their career by making official statements, since the UFO phenomenon was not taken seriously. the president had to intervene to resolve the dilemma. Thus we succeeded in obtaining authorization from the then Minister of Defense, Lorena Escudero, which stated as follows. All military personnel may make statements with absolute freedom, and this issue will not lead to the addition of any detail on their CV that might damage their reputation. In this way, we managed to overcome the second obstacle, which was very important. 
The third problem that Rodriguez and his colleagues had to overcome was also the most difficult. It directly involved the U.S. Secret Services, who offered military personnel significant economic and career-related incentives, provided that they respected a series of obligations. Amongst these, they required that information and documents regarding UFOs should be concealed. In the meantime, Rafael Correa had been elected president of Ecuador. In March 2008, a diplomatic crisis with Colombia led Correa to discover that his secret services had been corrupted. Y logran descubrir que había un financiamiento he discovered that U.S. intelligence had secretly financed the Ecuadorian military secret services. So Correa took action. He dismissed the entire military structure directing the military secret services, and through the U.S. Embassy, he ordered the expulsion of all the CIA officers and all those who were involved in secret work in Ecuador. This frightened the military personnel enough that they ceased to conceal information. The following week, the president called a meeting in Cosena, the National Security Council. The meeting included the Air Force commander, the Army commander, the commander of the armed forces, the head of the Joint Command and the Minister of Defense. He invited us to this meeting and in front of us he said, the commanders of the Air Force, Army and Armed Forces must completely deregulate information on the UFO phenomenon. We don't want anything about this issue to remain secret in our country. The documents say that Jaime Rodriguez is authorized to enter any military structure in the country to conduct investigations and gather testimony on any case concerning the UFO phenomenon. Thanks to this authorization, over 400 deregulated UFO videos are now available to researchers in Ecuador. Most of them were recorded by civilians. In fact, before President Rafael Correa took a new sensational stance on the subject, the military confiscated all such videos. The material was regularly classified, and the public was denied access to it. The statement made by the Chief of Air Staff, Colonel Zanoni Garcia Dominguez, confirms the reason behind this situation. Once we have obtained the analyses and information, we'll be able to transmit all these documents officially. These are the first films of unidentified flying objects to be declassified by the Ecuadorian government. While celebrating a birthday party at the home of the former Vice President of the Republic, Luis Parodi, guests notice an anomalous object hovering in the sky. The video was recorded in 1992. In the images, we can clearly see the mysterious craft's orange-colored glow and its tubular shape. This video, also recorded in the 1990s, shows an amazing glowing platform hovering in the skies over Quito. was recorded by Francisco Navas and his sister from the terrace of their home. The videos may be the most fascinating part of the UFO material, 
but the direct testimony made by military personnel is of even greater importance. 44 statements by military personnel were released to the CEIFO. Today, they're part of the public domain on the internet and YouTube. These personnel are still in the military. They have experienced the events described in person whilst in service. There can be no doubt as to the veracity of these statements. While we were executing a flight maneuver during an instrumental exercise at the base in Malta, we saw a light moving towards the Cruthita sector, near the city of Cruthita. We notified the control tower that unknown traffic was approaching. So when we got closer, at about 2,000 or 3,000 feet, we veered left to get a better look at the lights we had in front of us. Right then, the two lights moved into formation with incredible speed and flew off toward the Cruthita Mountains, near the city of Cruthita. We flew over the sector, but we were unable to locate them. We had begun our descent from 11,000 feet, and I reckon that we had descended by about 2,000 feet when I saw a very bright light, more or less around, uh, how can I put it, at a position of about 5 o'clock, a bit lower. I was in the back cockpit of the aeroplane, and Major Enriquez was in the front cockpit. I pointed it out to him and he saw it. Immediately afterward, I called the control tower to verify whether there was an airplane, to which the tower responded that there was no traffic. We thought it was an airplane, but in the moment we veered toward this bright light, we saw that the object turned toward us and divided into two very intense lights on a collision course with us. So the pilot in the front cockpit, the Major, executed a manoeuvre to the left, and while we were turning, we continued to watch what the object was doing, and we saw that it stopped in mid-air and moved down toward the mountains. We tried to fly over a small mountain, and the object crossed us on this side, and while we tried to cross it from the other side, it disappeared without a trace. We scanned the area, but there was no trace of it. We thought it was an airplane, but the movements this light made were very fast, very erratic. An airplane can't do that. For example, turn and stop in mid-air and descend, descend diagonally. No airplane can do that. The instruments we have enable us to identify the objects moving in airspace clearly. We can clearly distinguish a commercial airplane from a military airplane or from extraneous objects. We have a lot of confidence in the capability of these instruments. Therefore, the information we have available, not just our information, but also that coming from abroad, in particular from the United States, which is a very qualified source of information, makes me confident that we are dealing with an area in which there are unidentified flying objects. In real terms, these are extraterrestrial objects, and I'm sure of it. We share the universe with other beings. Statements of such significance have never before been made publicly by military officials in active service. And they show the level of importance of the order that President Correa had given to the commanders of the armed forces on June the 25th, 2007. With official document number 2007-0439-CSN. These events, combined with Jaime Rodriguez's role as a television journalist, began to change civilian society's attitude towards the UFO phenomenon in Ecuador. We've noticed that there's a greater sense of maturity among us now. The population has a more mature attitude towards the UFO phenomenon. This stimulates us to move our work into the analytical part of the subject, which is what we really need to focus on now. Initially, civilians seem to be afraid to call me and say, I've recorded a video. 
Now they do, and with new vigor. People are participating much more now. I get a lot of emails stating, I've taken this photo, I've recorded this video. That is, we've noted an increase in cooperation on the part of the civilian community regarding testimony and evidence. This is the sense of maturity I'm talking about. So the sensationalist press, which has often used this subject to sell magazines or other things, has suddenly gone quiet, completely. This change began to yield its first fruits. The example that Rodriguez describes is emblematic. I'd had a lot of problems with the airport's radar director. He was always annoyed with me because he didn't believe in UFOs. So this gentleman saw that I was leaving and he called me. Hey, Jaime Rodriguez, come here. And he said to me, seeing as you're interested in these things, have a look at this photo. It was taken here yesterday at about 6 p.m. And he gave me this photo. This is evidence. It was taken by the radar director at Guayaquil Airport. Even some young people from a famous Ecuadorian music group called Los Chaucha Kings contacted me. Their drummer, Diego Mino, had taken a photo of it. The same object, photographed by two or three people at the same hour, on the same day, is even stronger evidence for us. It's a substantial change in behaviour for those who had denied and opposed the matter before. Just think, now they're contributing, they're providing evidence. This is a real change in attitude, caused by this, how can I put it, this openness in deregulating the information on UFOs in Ecuador. The photo shows a clearly disc-shaped object above the Guayaquil City Airport buildings. We can easily make out the UFO's hexagonal structure. For a number of years, unidentified flying objects have often been detected near erupting volcanoes, or those that are about to become active. We have a volcanic chain, part of which is active, and the other part returning to activity. Tungurahua attracts media interest with TV stations placing their cameras there to film the volcano each time it erupts. And they show these objects twirling in the sky. TV stations get involved in this phenomenon filming the UFOs flying around the volcanoes. During an eruption of the volcano Tungurahua, the main national channel in Ecuador, Tele Amazonas, films the extraordinary spectacle. Suddenly, a glowing object appears above the volcanic crater and then disappears after just a few seconds. At one point, the mysterious glowing craft reappears. Cameramen Marco Ramirez and Julio Avilan capture the incredible scene on film. The object is moving. The video cameras are set on tripods. Shortly afterwards, flashes of light similar to lightning begin to appear. When slowing down the images, we can clearly distinguish these flashes of light. They seem to come out of light spheres. Then, a series of even larger and brighter flashes appears at the mouth of the volcano. In the still, one of the flashes seems to come from two side-by-side -side sources, while other smaller flashes appear above them. Here, we can see three light spheres, and only one of them emits a flash. Later, telemetric analyses conducted in the United States have revealed that the object inside the crater had to have been at least 30 meters in diameter. But what sort of technology enables a flying object to stop at the mouth of an erupting volcano? Another sighting confirms the link between unidentified flying objects and volcanic areas. This time, it was filmed by a truly exceptional witness. The event took place near Ecuador's capital, Quito. Here, the wind can reach up to 140 kilometers per hour. 
A family is on an outing in the countryside when something attracts their attention. An unusual object hovering in the air despite the strong wind. Filming the event is Ecuador's chief of police. Bueno, estamos en la cima del Pichincha, continuamos y hemos encontrado algún objeto que está volando aquí entre las nubes. No sabríamos decir qué es. Podría ser un ovni. Y vamos a filmarle para mandarle a, a Jaime Rodríguez. Vamos a congelarle la imagen un momentito ahí. ¿Qué creen que sea? ¿Un globo? Pues desapareció la imagen. That same night, the staff of Quito's Equavisa television channel received several calls notifying them of the presence of a mysterious, brightly shining craft right above the crater. The station sent a team straight away to film what was happening. The following is their report, which was later broadcast. Now we'll go back to the news we gave you at the beginning of the program due to the large number of calls we've received. The peace was disturbed at Quito tonight by a phenomenon that has not yet been explained. Here we see the images recorded earlier. A bright, blinking yellow and red-colored light appeared and disappeared in the sky south of the capital. The phenomenon was seen from various neighborhoods in Quito, and residents, primarily in the southern area, have been calling our staff continually to tell us that they saw it. Aquavisa's video cameras recorded the images you're seeing now. By analyzing the images, we can clearly see that the light emanating from the UFO even shines through the clouds. The mysterious object's varying luminosity and its ability to hover prove that it couldn't be a headlight on an aeroplane or any other conventional craft. Quito was once more the setting for another incredible sighting. It's another important declassified case which joins the already extensive CEIFO archives. On September the 5th, 2007, Dr. Antonio Osorio witnessed a very special phenomenon. A flotilla. I was sitting down, having lunch and chatting with Patrizia about the patients, as we always do. Patrizia came back in, looked out of the window and said, Doctor, look, what could that be? I went to the window and I also saw some, they looked like aeroplanes or balloons. They seemed to me to be more like aerostats, but I was amazed to see so many of them. I ran out, called my wife and told her to come and see. It was a really strange thing. And I asked her where my video camera was. I ran to get it and we went out onto the terrace to watch the scene. We can see a classic flotilla composed of about 57 white spheres in the sky. The video camera has recorded a sound similar to the rattling of a train in their presence. CEIFO researchers checked whether the Military Aviation Command or the Civil Aviation Office had authorized the release of aerostats or other similar objects. But their answer was negative. I thought that there were no fewer than 50 of them. At first sight, they were moving forward in a uniform way, but once I filmed them, it appeared that they were brightly shining objects and apparently they moved very quickly. I saw two objects fly by, flat and oval-shaped. Curiosity drove me to go to the window and I said, Doctor, come look at this. What is it? And we stood in front of the window and when we saw what it was, we noted that there were about 50 of them, so many of them. Dr. Antonio Osorio had always been skeptical about the UFO phenomenon, 
he would never have imagined that one day he'd be involved in such an event. No, I didn't believe them because they've always said there are people who know how to edit videos in such a way as to make us believe they're real, but they are. But now I believe it. I have faith in it. This video is part of the UFO material that was declassified thanks to President Rafael Correa's order. Therefore, the authenticity of these videos has been confirmed by the Presidency of the Republic of Ecuador. The extraordinary events which have taken place in this country, in particular the brave historical stance taken by President Rafael Correa, open up a new phase, both in the history of this country and of humanity itself, something that was unthinkable until just a few years ago. Will other governments do the same before the reality of this situation outweighs their decisions?